everybody. How's everybody doing today? Today is a protein sparing modified fast day. Yes, it is, but you guys, I'm gonna make a protein sparing modified fast delicious meatloaf today. And you guys, who went up, who went down on the Harry versus Wendy race to our goal weight? Come back and I'll share. Welcome all you new folks and welcome back everybody to Loving It on Keto. How is everybody doing? I hope you guys watched my Thanksgiving meal yesterday because that is what I am making for our Thanksgiving dinner. Give or take a few things that other people will be bringing that are non-keto. But I make a keto holiday dinner if it's at my house. Yes, I do. So last year, I think I made baked potatoes for the few people that wanted them. Nobody ate them. They loved my uh, mashed cauliflower. So it works out wonderfully. Anyway, you guys, today is a protein sparing modified fast day. We are down to the last leg of it. Yes, we are. Is that it right there? Right here. Where? Right here. You need to keep your finger up till I get here. Okay. Protein sparing modified fast make protein your priority. No more than 10 carbs, no more than 10 grams of fat. You guys, it's working really, really well for us. Now, Harry and I um, took the day, had a great day, had a great date day. We went and had uh, chicken wings at the Longhorn. And even though I tell them, please, please do not put extra seasoning on them because they're already seasoned. They did, and man, were they salty. <laughs> they were salty. They were good, yeah, but, but they, they put extra, and she said, oh, I'm so sorry, and I'm like, you know, that's fine. I hate to waste food, and I know I spend the money, and I tell them. But anyway, you guys, we had a wonderful time. We stayed keto. We have no banana bread left, and I need to make some breads today, but I may not show them on the air because you guys have seen them all, um, and I do want to make a protein sparing modified fast meatloaf today that I'm going to share with everybody, so that's going to be good. We have to have breakfast. It's almost 12 o'clock. We've been busy. <laughs> Everything you eat or drink the day before, sometimes two days prior, can have a direct effect on your weight, including too much of the bad salt. Yes, indeed. So you guys, Harry and I are in a race. Harry versus Wendy. Our first all-time low goal weight is 165 pounds. And so to even it out, instead of me getting to my first all-time new low under 171 pounds, we're going to do our goal weight. Our first goal weight is 165 pounds. So who's going to win? Is it going to be Harry? Is it going to be me? We're neck and neck right now, which is crazy, crazy, crazy. So are you for Team Harry or Team Wendy? You guys, we both went up yesterday. Yes, we did. Now, Harry had over a pound whoosh. So he went up a little bit more than I. I went up four tenths of a pound. And I know it's that salt. I knew that it was gonna happen because I was so thirsty the rest of the day. Now, when I salt my food with Redmond Real Salt and the seasonings that I use at home, I don't get that thirst that I cannot quench that I get when I go out to eat and I have regular table salt. And that is really weird to me, but uh, yeah. And I can tell that I'm a little swollen today, ring-wise, usually, you know? So um, it's quite interesting that that happens. Now, it may take a day or two to get off, but we had a great time. We're gonna enjoy our ketogenic lifestyle because it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Being able to do the protein spraying modified fast every other day, having the Saturday as your refuel in 
enjoy your keto ketovore carnivore ketovorish low carb deliciousness foods that's where you make and add the cheese and the sour cream and all the good stuff right so that you can hit the ground running the next week we're fooling our bodies we're keeping our bodies guessing and in between the protein sparing modified fast, we're doing a regular day burst on your macros, the foods that work best for you and your body. Yes, indeed. So anyway, because it's protein sparing modified fast, I have got to come up with something super simple, super easy, super delicious for us for breakfast because we're having a delicious protein sparing modified fast meatloaf for dinner. Come on, you guys. <laughs> Let's get started with the day. Come back in the next segment when we break our fast. You guys, we're having eggs. We're having scrambled eggs. I had just enough. I mean, this is full, so I've got to be very careful when I move it over here. Oh, yes, indeed. It's a cup of egg whites for Harry and I to share. And an egg. Two eggs, so we each get a little bit of the uh, vitamins and minerals and a little bit of fat from the egg yolk. Plus it gives it flavor. Let me just whip it around in here a little bit. Doesn't have to be beat too much for me or for Harry, but I do like putting on my pluck seasoning. I'm gonna use the spicy. I just love the flavor, you guys. Um, Basically, Redmond's Real Salt, if it's not Redmond's Real Salt, Redmond's Smoke Salt, any of Redmond's products or Pluck, that's basically what I put on my food these days. I have my Italian and I have my poultry seasoning, but other than that, these are fitting the bill for me very, very nicely. Let me throw these away. I love the sprouts. My second choice would be Bob Evans. These beat the best for egg whites, stiff egg whites. People are telling me again, um, Kirkland eggs, whites are back in. They're not whipping as well as they used to. So I don't know what's up with that. I know they had a recall the beginning of the month. They're back in stock, but I think I'm gonna stick with sprouts because these do whip. At least right now they do. Really well. Yes, they do. Let me get two plates. These are my fall plates, my pumpkin ones. I got them 40% off at Hobby Lobby. Yes, I did. Let me get some. Do you want hot sauce? Yes. And I want ketchup. Yes. I am a ketchup on my scrambled eggs. Can't stand it on uh, like over easy eggs or fried eggs, you know, but I love it for some reason on scrambled eggs. It just gives me just what I want. Yes, I am cooking in a nonstick pan. And after you're done, let it sit and cool and all the, any eggs left in the pan will just flake off. You can just wipe your pan basically and then clean it the way you normally do. Do not put hot water in it. When it's hot, don't put water in it at all. Just let it cool down. The trick to keeping your pans clean and free from having something build up on them so they don't stick is to put water in them while they're hot. So you just don't. Don't, do not. Please refrain from, right Harry? Yep, yep, yep. Fight it. Fight it. Don't worry about it. You're going, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get this clean. Yes, you will. Unless you've already screwed up your pan. Yeah, right. I was gonna say, you wanna start off with a new pan. Yeah, unless you've, unless you've screwed up your pan already, or you've burnt your pan. Or you've sprayed. Um, yeah, don't spray them either. Yeah, don't, whatever you do, don't, don't spray these. Because they get sticky. Yep. And they get micro bumps. Yes. See, it's already, look, as it cools down, look. You guys, and it'll do more when it's cooled off. Oh, yeah. So, put it off the range. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Okay, here we go. Harry's mine. Harry gets a little La Victoria hot sauce. 
Just a little bit. Yep. And I get just a little bit of primal unsweetened ketchup. I gotta be careful when I squeeze because sometimes stuff comes out really hard. And that's it. I've got two pounds of bison 90-10 out and that's what I'm gonna use for my um, meatloaf. And I'll share how I'm gonna do that to keep it protein spraying modified fast. Yes, indeed. But you guys, gotta eat now. I am making meatloaf and you can make meatloaf a bazillion ways and change up the taste depending on the herbs, spices, and the meats that you use. Now I have two pounds of bison, which is 90-10. Someone asked me what bison tastes like. It tastes just like beef. Yeah, it does to me. It tastes just like beef to me. It's, yeah. it's leaner. It's much leaner. Right. And it just tastes like grass-fed beef to me because buffalo or bison is grass-fed. So, come on over here. Here's that might, what be the, that might be the only taste difference I think people might see is because they're grass-fed. They're grass-fed yeah. because they need to be. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do today. I'm putting some um, hickory smoked real salt. I'm going to make kind of a barbecue taste. Onion, garlic, smoked paprika, nutritional yeast, and then for my panko or breadcrumbs, I'm going to use Carnivore Crisp grass-fed beef flour, and I'm going to add some beef organ blend flour from Carnivore Crisps. Yes, I am. And then I'm going to put in for my liquids, I'm going to put in ketchup. I have prime uh, ke primal ketchup and some Worcestershire sauce. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to put my dry in first. I think I'm going to use about a half a cup and we may have to change this as we go along. Something that I want to do when I put this in is I want to taste the, um, it's, it's nothing but grass-fed beef and Redmond Real Salt. So I want to taste to see how salty, oops, wait a minute. Too much? No, I oh. got, yeah. I got the packet in here. I'll have to put it over here. About a half of a cup, but let me taste this because, okay, it's not that salty at all. Okay, so that's gonna kind of be my, my, my panko for everything. That was half a cup. You can use pork rind panko. You can use my high protein buttermilk bread ground up as panko. You can use Parmesan cheese grated, I mean, uh, um, ground for your panko, right? Depending on your macros, but I want it as lean as possible. Now, I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of my beef and organ blend. I'm hiding the flavor of the organ meats, but I, I'm getting all my delicious vitamins and minerals that way too. So, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to add a full teaspoon of hickory smoked Redmond salt, which I love, love, love. It's going to get, oops, I said teaspoon. Oh, Wendy, oops, thank goodness I heard myself. Don't want to waste any of it. A teaspoon. I'm going to put a teaspoon of this in. Put all my stuff on top and then I can mix it easier. Oh yeah, that smells delicious. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of onion, garlic, onion, garlic, smoked paprika. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of each of those in. Just right on top of my dry mix. One, onion. 
You can mix it in a bowl separately. You, there's all kinds of ways to do it, but this is the lazy person's way, and that would be me. I love garlic. You can use more or less to your taste. It's up to you. I love smoked paprika. I love it. Right there. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. I love it, it's got vitamins and minerals and I love the cheesy flavor that it gives, the nutty cheesy flavor, don't we Harry? Oh yeah. So I'm gonna put that in there. Real quick, I'm gonna put my gloves on because I believe in smushing it all together in a minute, but uh, just do this like chopsticks just kind of toss it around in itself there you go there you be there you go one egg that's my binder right there that needs a little bit more wetness to it when I get it done I will be adding egg whites I will add egg whites because I want to keep it lean. Now, I want to add a half cup of my primal ketchup to this. There you go. You can use tomato sauce, tomato ketchup. You can use uh, uh, marinara sauce you can use a little bit of tomato paste however you want to do this but I'm just adding my ketchup my favorite ketchup unsweetened sugar-free ketchup the primal is less sweet it's more um, tangy to me it's not quite as sweet Harry's not a sweet person he doesn't not like sweet all. he does not care for sweet barbecue sauce so we want to make sure we have this but I'm going to keep this because I'm going to need this in a minute I want a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and this is just organic you can use you know uh, what is it something in Perkins um, I love my Worcestershire sauce with this I'm going to put ye old gloves on and give this a nice smush up. And then I'm going to feel it to see if it's moist enough because the ground beef is going to um, pick up that moisture. So you want to have your, your meat moist enough that it, it's not dry. You don't want dry meatloaf, right? You can use pork. You can use turkey here. Watch this. I'm just going to put this egg right up on top. Mix this, all this good stuff together. Smear it all around. Do the hokey pokey. And turn yourself around. Because that's what it's all about, folks. Yes, indeed. How many of you guys played the hokey pokey on rainy days in school when you were a kid? Leave me a comment below. I'm not saying anything. Well, you were in military academy. I'm sure they had some strategic something. No, we didn't do anything like play anything like you didn't, hokey pokey. You didn't play do the hokey pokey. No. Well, no, you wouldn't have because you were an all boy military yeah, academy. You know, so since you were third grade, that's what you're in until your mom put you in ninth grade high school and you found out what girls were. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that was my, That was a mistake. That ruined me. That was a mistake. Anyway, that feels really nice. That feels really good, you guys. That smells heavenly, doesn't it, Harry? Mm-hmm. Mm, that smells heavenly. Can you hand me that pan that's right there next to you? This pan, the pan? It's a great gift. This was gifted to us, you guys, and it is a meatloaf pan. Yeah. It is fabulous. You just have to remember not to take the meatloaf out, grab it, the whole pan, because the, this part lifts up. Now this comes out. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. Now I like to, I don't want to round mine on top. I want it square because I'm going to put a sauce on top. Yes, I am. 
because I like sauce. This is going to be so good. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pop it into, I've got to go check my temperature. I think it's 350 for like 50 to 55 minutes. Um, but I've got to go check it. But for right now, I'm going to put 350 degrees and I'm going to put it in for 45 minutes. I'm going to make a sauce for the top when we come back. i got to put this back in the little container. But you guys, it's just as easy as that. I'm going to make a sauce. It's going to be delicious. But I'm going to put this in the oven right now. So let me get it in the oven. Back up a little bit, babes. And you want to grab the whole pan when you put it in the oven and when you want to take it out, too. Let's get it on 45 minutes. Oops, 46 minutes, that's fine. Then you guys, let me clean up. Once I figure out the time, I'll let you guys know if I'm gonna change it out. We'll come back when I make my sauce for the top. And you put that on the last 10 minutes just so it glazes and gets nice and warm on top. So you guys come back when we have meatloaf. Oh, my brain, my brain. I think this is what I'm gonna do. The sauce. This time my sauce is gonna be more barbecue oriented. I'm using another half cup of my ketchup. And um, 30, uh, cooking two pounds of the hamburger at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 55 minutes or till it reaches 160 degrees internal temperature. So at, at 45 minutes, I'm gonna put this on top. So that's my ketchup. So that it's on there for about 10 minutes. It'll get glazed and cooked right into the meat and it'll be absolutely exquisite. Yes, it will. You can use just barbecue sauce. You don't have to make your own sauce. I just wanted to share with people that you can make your own. Uh, sauce, All right? I'm gonna put, uh, let me think what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of Red Rock barbecue seasoning from Red, Red Mandrill salt in, in there, just a little bit. Mm, that's gonna be too much. I'm gonna put about a half, about a half a teaspoon of salt. Yeah, that's better. Half a teaspoon of salt. And one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm gonna taste, get this all mixed in here real quick. Oh, that's gonna need another. Let me do a little, that looks too ketchupy. One more teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, more or less to your taste. If you do not like Worcestershire sauce, use amino, coconut amino acid, uh, coconut aminos or Bragg's aminos, just to give it that salty um, um, edamame, uh, umami, however you say it, umami taste to it. Sweet, sour. Ooh, that's good. That's tangy and delicious. Now, if you want it a little sweeter, I would add some, just a pinch of the brown or golden sugar-free sweetener on that to make it as sweet as you want to, but Harry likes it barbecue-y, tangy. I'm gonna put a little bit of smoked paprika in this too, because I like that smoky taste. I want it more barbecue. Just probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. I 
And this is all how you like it, right? More or less to taste. What does it need? I want you to taste this, Harry. Me? You like it? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Oh, I know what. A shake of hot sauce. That's what it needs. We don't have any Louisiana hot sauce? I need to go get some Louisiana hot sauce. I like just a dash. Hold, please. No Louisiana. Ugh. Okay, I've got some sriracha. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to put a teaspoon up on it. I would put just a dash. I'd put probably half a teaspoon in. Just, just enough to give it some heat, you guys. See, for me, I'd like a little bit of brown sugar in this. Mm. I would. I know you wouldn't, but I would. Let me try. Oh, that's it. Ooh, 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 yeah, yep, yep. Here, try this. Ooh. That's it. That's good. That's it. A little bit changed it that much. Yep, it did. And like I said, it's tangy. If you guys, and it's got that umami to it, if you want it a little bit sweet, put a little bit of the golden or the uh, swerve uh, brown sugar, any of the brown sugar replacements that you like, or even a drop of stevia or a drop of maple, ooh, maple, and that would be delicious too. Drop of Granberry Farms maple extract would be delicious, or even a little bit of maple syrup to get it that sweet and sour and umami flavor you guys so we're coming back i'm going to pour this on top the last 10 minutes or so and then we'll pull it out of the oven and we'll let it rest and then we'll have a meatloaf for our main meal today on our protein sparing modified fast day yes indeed i am putting my sauce on top just laying it across the top nice thick coating of my delicious sauce I already temped it. It's at temp at 45 minutes, so I am going to cook it for about five more minutes just to get this nice um, and delicious. Actually, what I'm going to do is turn off the oven, but I have an electric oven, so it can cook in there for a little bit. Well, you've left the door open quite a while. I, well, that's because you wanted to film it, and your camera went cuckoo and everything else, so excuse me. <laughs> So your timer. What turned out to be a quick thing ended up not being a quick thing. Five minutes attempt. So anyway, you guys come back. We'll pull it out of the oven and then we're going to let it rest for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to pull it out, let it rest, check it, temp it one more time, and then we're going to have delicious meatloaf. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. You guys, this is so nice to be able to lift this meatloaf up and then get your, get your, and then lift it onto the plate. It works so well. I take this whole thing off with the meatloaf on it, put it on my plate to the end, lift it off, and it works be beautifully. Sorry, pardon me. Meatloaf's done, Harry. Do you want thinner slices? Several? Several. You're gonna cut it? Yes. Why that side? Because it's closest to the plate. Because I can't see it. Well, I'm sorry. Look at that. How's that? That looks good, man. Come on, give me another slice. Give me another or, slice. Or is that yours? No, that's good. I, you, you get know, two you slices. Can have the end. You get two. Oops. You know? So I'm slicing it. It hasn't sat up like I wanted it to, but mm -hmm. that looks delicious. That's really good, huh? If you let it set up for 10 minutes, which I can't, Harry keeps telling me he's hungry. So I'm blaming it on Harry because he wants his meatloaf. Yes. So anyway, you guys. Mm. 
Mmm. And then this tomatoey, ketchupy, spicy, barbecue flared taste is delicious. Oh, yeah, man. Yes, it is. Letting it set up, like I said, is best. But anyway, let me put this down. Meatloaf is so good. I want Harry to come over here and taste it. Get some sauce and all the good stuff. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that hits the spot. Is it? Yep. Is it good? Yep. Okay, so put it down. Mm-hmm. Start, mm -hmm. Harry, one you're more, not. Just one more. Just one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, put it down. We know. You can tell when Harry and Sally would like a taste too. Yeah. We can have a little bit of the bottom part when we're ready and we're all done. But you guys, these would be great with collie mashed or whatever mashed vegetable you like with yours like uh, collie mashed potatoes right it's great comfort food anyway you guys we are going to go ahead and close this out today tomorrow is a regular keto day carnivore day low carb day make sure you eat high price prioritize your protein don't forget you guys please remember to like subscribe or that little bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video give us a thumbs up we'll see you right here tomorrow 10 minutes are up we couldn't wait okay sally get over here you're such a little bossy girl it's a bossy girl she says well i smell meatloaf mama she says yeah she says i smell meatloaf don't you you're so cute now you gotta be careful of the light. On your mark, set, go! She was a little gazelle in another life, I think, because she likes to leaps and bounds. Anyway, you guys, I've got a ton of stuff that's going out to Arvita tonight after we eat, but we gotta have our meatloaf right now. See you guys later. Good night.